Hey guys, it's March 5th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop. And we're continuing um, sewing on Socialites. And Socialites is a program that Fat Quarter Shop put together where we give you free blocks for three inch, six inch, and nine inch. And what is so great is if you're ever doing another sew along or another quilt and you might not love the block, well, you can fill one of these blocks in. And um, we're going to do a Socialites 2 also. It'll be in 2021. Yay! So I'm going to show you the blocks from today um, that we're going to be working on. The block name today is called Zest. And the designer is Brigitte from Zen Chic. And we're going to pop up her block real quick. And um, so that's one of her blocks. And then if you go to her blog and her newsletter this morning, she has a yellow version that's just two colors. So that's kind of showing you how you can take the block and do um, lots of colors, or you can do one color. And on the social lights, we kind of just did one color just to simplify. And this is a three inch block in quotation, also by Zen Chic. And she has lots of colors that really pop. And this background is also Zen Chic. This is Figs and Shirtings by Fig Tree. And this one is Folktale by Layla Boutique. And I'm planning something with Layla's next collection, which is called Christmas Morning. And I'm gonna talk more about it in a couple of weeks, but I'm gonna take her fat quarter bundle and do something really fun with it. This one is Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And this one is Cider by Basic Gray. So you can kind of see all the different colors. And when you get into, uh, my advice would be for the three inch, when you get into something this small, you want a, a darker color is gonna look better than a lighter color because it's gonna pop more on that really small size. So that would be the difficulty with working with the three inch just throughout is, is that size. And then because the block is named Zest, <clears throat> we did these blocks in yellow. Ooh. And um, this fabric, let's see, my fabric is Homestead by April Rosenthal. I think that's what it's called. And the background is 20708-39. Now, <clears throat> one thing that I did, you can see, Look at that. Mm -hmm. So you can tell that um, I must have stretched or something, but when that gets quilted, you won't see it. Um, and yeah, so this is an April Rosenthal fabric. And you can see that I trimmed on the outside because I don't have any um, leftover um, threads coming off. So this block, I would say it's intermediate and it's block number 21. And I'm gonna show you um, just some different tips. There's lots of things you can do with this block and I'll kind of tell you what I think you could do. And some shortcuts. Let's see, so what size are we doing today? Nine? Nine inch. Okay, so we're gonna do the nine inch, which is this. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things. And then I'm gonna tell you kind of what we're doing and then what you could do at home. So this is a flying geese and on, I'm only gonna talk about the nine inch here. But you could do the same thing with the other ones. So for the nine inch, you can do this the traditional way, which is if you follow the instructions right here, C and B for all sizes. You can do this flying geese paper for the nine inch. Now for the other flying geese, the three inch and the six inch, I don't think we have it's so Emma paper um, for that size. I think they're too small. Or you can use the Eleanor Burns ruler to do these, or you can use the Creative Grids flying geese ruler. So there's lots of ways to do flying geese, lots of options. What I'm gonna do today is our new paper. And um, on one of the other days, I'll do the Eleanor Burns method. And so there's that. So lots of options. I'm going to use our paper. Actually, I'm, hold on. We do have it. 
hold on, one and a half by three. I'm actually gonna do this ruler instead. I decided. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do this ruler instead because I need to press open because they're touching. So I'll do this ruler oh. and show you how to do it. And first, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna cut the whole block. I'm just gonna show A and D first. And the reason I'm gonna do that is if you look at this, one, two, three, four. They're all the same. So if we, ch if we chain, no, if we strip piece this, it's gonna look more accurate. It's gonna be really quick. So what I'm gonna do is think this through. So I have to think my math out in my head and I never do it right on camera, but that's okay. We're gonna pretend that I do it right. So these are two inch squares. So I need two inch strips times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, times eight is 16. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut two and a quarter inch by the fat quarter. And we'll see if that works. And when I do these at home, I kinda just wing it. I just do whatever and then sometimes I have too much, sometimes I have too little. So what I'm gonna do is put These are my two back, these are my fabrics I'm using today. And I'm gonna put the salvages together and I'm gonna iron. And then we'll cut. So it's not gonna work as good since we don't have a lot of space, but I'm gonna get this nice and flat. And then I'm gonna put the salvage of this one right on top of the salvage of the other. I do tend to, to do that and just get it nice and, now I've already starched my fabrics. And then here what I'm gonna do, just make sure it's nice and flat. And I'm gonna cut a strip here, just one strip. Now it's supposed to be two inches, but when I strip piece, I make it bigger and then trim down. And that's an extra step and it might, um, it's gonna take longer, but that's okay. And I'm gonna do, this is not what I would do at home, but I don't have any room here. So this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna cut one side. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. People are saying, stop, you need two and a half inch? No, I don't. No. Okay. No. So for D and A, two inch squares. So I'm gonna cut two and a quarter. I don't think so. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> I'll bring my block out and look. Okay, so then I'm gonna go two and a quarter. And cut. No. I would not do this at home, but I don't have any room here. Okay, I'm gonna look at my block. And it finishes at one and a half, so I've got plenty. So now I'm going to take this. It's already right sides together, because I cut it right sides together. And I'm gonna sew with my quarter inch foot on really fast. And it doesn't have to be accurate, because I'm about to trim it down. Somebody's been messing with this. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna move some stuff. Sorry. I'm gonna move some stuff over here. So we have some room. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'm gonna set the seam, I'm trying to think of the word, press to one side, then press open.
and then we'll cut it down. And that I will need the full length of the table, so that's why I kind of moved everything. And you'll have to stay tuned because Lily has on her motor dress. <laughs> and I didn't notice it when I first came in because she was behind the, she was in her cubicle and then yes. someone said, did you see Lily's third dress? And I said, oh. no. <laughs> it's fancy. Oh, thanks. So I, I just go pretty slow when I do this. And you can see when you look at this block right here that I did, You can see that I have a bunch of stuff all messed up here. See that? That's all bent. This is crooked. So, um, this must have been a day where I just didn't have time to fix that. So, you don't have to be perfect. Um, you can do it however you want. And that's what I mean about sometimes I, I'm a perfectionist, sometimes I'm not. Depends on how much time I have. So now, I've got this long piece. So I'm gonna kinda do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. So this should be, if I would've cut it two inches, I've got, see, I've got a quarter inch extra. So two inches minus 0.25 is 1.75. So I'm gonna put this line on my ruler on the 1.75 and you see how I had just move it with my nail trim that off and then it's going to come out the exact size it needs to be now this side it should be three and a half inches wide so on the second side I'm going to just measure from here not here And then I'm gonna subcut these into two inch strips or two inch segments, I guess. And I need one, two, three, four, five, I need eight of these. So I will um, use this line, trim. And then sometimes when you do a strip set, when you get to the middle or you get to a certain area, it might start being crooked, you just kind of cut a new piece and start over. So here, like when I go to my six, see how that's off? It's off. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna cut a straight one here and start over. Cause it's not, that's what happens with strip sets is they get a little bit off. But even doing it this way is gonna save you so much time. I mean, if you did it the other way, you would piece forever. Mm -hmm. Now we write the block just the traditional method. It's a free pattern. I just take these free patterns and show you ways that I would do at home to make it easier. And so we actually need four that are like dark, light, dark, light. We need four of those. So dark dark so now I'm going to chain piece that way and then mm. we'll almost be done mm. yep and hopefully I did it the right size <laughs> um, so when I chain piece before you saw how fast I was going so when I cut my thread it um, came unthreaded which does happen a lot because I go so fast uh -oh. And the one at work, it's a little bit more finicky. The one I have at home is, um, doesn't cut as much. So I'm gonna just chain piece these real quick. And since we're pressing this block open, which you don't have to do, but for our setting, that's why I'm doing it that way. Whatever stitch length you normally use, you want to go down a little bit. So I usually use a 2.0 or so, so I did like a 1.5. So I'm 
so that your threads will not come undone. And I'm using Arthel Color 2000 today. That's what, um, that's pretty much what I use all the time, except we have a sew along coming up with Lisa Bonjean that I'm gonna use a different color. And I tested a couple of grays and I'm gonna show you um, what I came up with for me. So here I'm gonna set my seams all at one time and then go to one side and then press open. Hey guys, sorry about that. So I guess our internet went down in our building. We're not really sure. So I hope you're still with us. If you're not, I'm so sorry. So I was wondering if y'all could comment and let Lily know where the internet dropped. I think it dropped about right here. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna just keep going, but if I miss something, we can go back. So basically where we're at is, this is the center of the block. So I'm gonna separate. And I'm going to stitch these and then we'll press and then I'll stitch this. So I'm just going to put these right sides together and I am going to pin in every intersection and just make sure it lines up. And right here when you're doing this and if you're pressed open, if your seams start splitting apart, that just means next time do your stitch a little bit. Um, smaller. So there's that. And then we'll do this one. And then are still, are people on or they, did they drop off? I think people are still on. Yeah. Okay. Y'all, y'all comment and let us know if we're still on. Yeah. That's about my luck for this week. People are like, yay, you're back. Yay. Yay. We're trying. <laughs> So maybe it was just a little temporary. Yeah, I think the internet just went to bed for a second. It just took a little nappy nap. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my day is so busy today. So I don't know. Um, I gotta take Emma to get her hair cut. She hasn't gotten her hair cut in like, I don't know, nine months. And we just go to Ulta because it's like right by the house and she just has like straight hair. She doesn't want anything done to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they had no online booking, so I have to call. I was telling Lily, my kids don't have school today. I, I wonder like when they do have school because they're off all the time. It's driving oh. me crazy. <laughs> like, you have off again? Okay, see? Right there, see how that... Oh. So I'll fix it. I'll just um, pull the little threads out real quick and just kind of go over that one more time. Now, like I said, sometimes I leave it, sometimes I don't. Most of the time I don't leave it. Most of the time I don't. But sometimes there's deadlines that just have to be made. 
And if it's like 10 o'clock at night and I want to go to bed, then I'm going to leave it. So. so I'll just go back over that seam. Okay, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna press these and then we'll put that together and then we're gonna use the Eleanor Burns ruler. And I don't know um, if y'all have ever used it, but I found her in Paducah in 2002. I went to the nice. Paducah show and she does like a tent. It's like in it, she calls it a tent something. So it's like she's speaking and she's doing like a whole show and it's in a tent and it's, she showed that ruler and ever since then I've used it so much I love it so we can show that today and she's very funny if y'all have ever if you ever have the opportunity to hear her speak or anything like that she's hilarious and she's got a great story mm -hmm. I mean I'll let her tell her own story but it's a very inspiring story mm. Okay. So that's all we have to do is this last one. So we'll do that and then we're gonna move to the flying geese. That will be super quick. And then I have lots of sew along blocks. Lily has a dress to show you. Ooh. And like I said, I came up with something yesterday for the Christmas morning. I'm probably gonna use a fat quarter bundle. So, um, I'm excited. I took that bundle home last night and I got to get it starched. And the serendipity kits, the charity kits, those have shipped. So if your credit card processed, then you should be getting your kit any day. Ooh. So exciting. Yes. I haven't starched my fabric yet. So I'm like, just like you guys, I haven't starched my fabric. It's literally been sitting in my bathroom for six months. Like literally just sitting there looking at me like, please, please start me. <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit. We have to move one of the film dates and I'll talk about it in a little bit, but that definitely needs to be done. So do, 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 do. <laughs> so there is our one, two, four patch whatever, 16 patch, whatever that is, it's patch. done. And that's a quick way to do something like that. Um, that's the way that I always do it, fun. Now we're going to look at the ruler. Here's my block. Look at the pattern and figure out what else we need to cut from our fabric. So we need to make eight flying geese. When you cut the squares from this, you cut a light square and a dark square. That makes four. So I need two light squares and two dark squares to make eight. Now, this needs to be unfinished one and a half by three because it says cut two by three and a half. So two minus half an inch is one and a half three and a half minus half an inch is three. So it needs to finish at one and a half by three is my finished. And so sometimes I'll write that down so I don't have to keep looking at it. So that's my finished. And right here, one and a half by three finished. Now, if you wanted to make sure it's the right size, see it says two by three and a half, you can put this on the ruler. And you can see that unfinished, it's two by three and a half. So you can look at the ruler and if this section measures where you're at and you're cutting, it's the right size. So, two, so here we go, this is what we need. So when you buy this ruler, there's a large and a small. 
you have to keep this paperwork because if you don't, you can't really use the ruler. Now, one time I couldn't find it and you can Google it. You can Google like Eleanor Burns flying geese method and there is a PDF of this somewhere online, but try not to lose your paper. Mm -hmm. So I followed this right here. This is this little box and for the one and a half, can you scroll in a tiny, not that they're gonna be able to see, but it says one and a half by three, you need to cut a six and a four and a half. So what I do is I write that down, six, four and a half. And the six is your background. So the six inch would be this piece and your four and a half would be this piece. So this I'll write white and orange. But because I'm Kimberly and I like to, you know, complicate everything in my life, I don't cut that. I cut six and a half by five. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want any mistakes and I don't want to have to think and I want to be able to go as fast as I can. So scratch that out. I'm going to cut a six and a half white and a five inch orange times two. And then I'm going to show you now you can follow this. But I found a shortcut to this where you don't have to draw a line, and I'm gonna show that to you. So I'm gonna just, you know, keep complicating the day because that's what I do. Complicate, complicate, okay. My piece is not big enough, so there, that's gonna be great. Okay, let me see if I can find my other piece. Oh. That is somewhere. Um, uh, of the background or of the? Yeah, I, I, it's right here. I knew I, I tucked it somewhere. So I need a six and a half, I need two six and a half inch squares. So huh, now we're gonna show you what you really do when you make mistakes and I can make it work. Hmm. Can I have a, can you cut me a piece of that yardage that we had? That's, yeah, cut like a seven inch piece real quick. I'm going to starch it and make it work. Okay. So here's some scissors. Just cut a just cut a big old chunk. Just cut a big old chunk. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Lily. You're good. This is called Kimberly was not prepared today. Okay, so I'm going to cut a six and a half inch square. I need to cut one more. How big is the chunk? Just as big as this hole right here. Oh, okay. Okay. So I need two of these, but this piece right here is not big enough. And this is what I starched before we started because I wasn't thinking about it. Can you starch more? Yeah, okay. thanks. So now I need another piece that's about this size, but it needs to be starched. This is unstarched. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a little piece. Yeah, this is, this is really improv today. Where's the starch? <laughs> Uh, I think it's way, way low on there. No? It doesn't have the top on it. I'm not seeing it. No, here, I can grab one. Oh, here we go. Thanks. So this was starched. This is not starched, and I'm going to starch it real quick. And I'll show you how. If you're trying to improv like me today, then you can do it. So what I do is, so you can see the difference in the starch and the non-starch. See how that's floppy, mm -hmm. flying in the wind, and this is not, this is like hard, mm. it's not too cardboardy, but it's a little bit. So when I starch at home, this is exactly what I do. Now I soak it. Now. I would have a normally a piece of fabric here so that I don't ruin my board. I don't have time to mess with that today. So I, I soak it. So I do this. I try to get it even and soak it. And I'm going to talk more about this in a little bit because I've got a video for you to watch. Now that is pretty soaked. So you can see it's soaked on the front. It's soaked on the batter. Sorry. It's soaked on the front and the back. Now, I do not, mat it doesn't matter to me which side I starch on, I starch wherever, because to me, it goes through to the other side, so it doesn't matter. Now, I would normally take this to my bathroom and hang it on a 
clothes dryer? What do you call it? Uh, clothes rack? Clothes, clothes rack, rack or something. Drying rack. Drying rack, yeah, something like that. And then I would come back in a couple of hours and it would be done. But we're live on video and um, it's going great today. Um, <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. So now what I will do is I will just put this iron on here and I'm gonna just iron it until it is dry. And sometimes I do have to do this in my sewing room. If I miscut or run short, I will have to do this. So it's not, this is not something that doesn't happen. I mean, this is something that does happen. Now I want it to be 100% dry. So I just, and you'll know when it's dry because it won't be floppy. See how that's still a little bit floppy? I just keep ironing it. But normally when I starch like that, I starch and then I just hang it dry, come back. Now, depending on how big the piece is, is how long it will take to dry. So sometimes it will, um, sometimes it can be a couple of hours. Now, what I do do is I have like a vent, I guess you call it, in your bathroom, and I turn that on and it helps. And I open the windows so that if it's sunny, that will help it. So this is actually quite funny. So it's just a little bit wet over here still. So. Okay, so now it's, you can see, oh. it's went from floppy to not floppy. Mm -hmm. So now I need to cut a six and a half again. And it doesn't have to be exact and you'll see why, but I mean, I'm just gonna cut it out of a square. So basically when I use the Eleanor Burns rulers, the size that she tells you, I add half an inch, no matter what size you're doing. And that's just what I've done for years and years. So I bought the ruler in 2002, so 19 years. Cut it half inch bigger. Just what I, that, that's just what I came up with 19 years ago. And, woo, I'm getting old. So now I need to cut two five inch squares from this. So to do that, I'm gonna just put the salvages, not the salvages, but just put two together and I'll just cut off right here. So I'll just kind of follow this. And going forward from here, I'm doing it a little bit different than the, it's basically, you're gonna get the same exact result, but you're gonna save time because I'm all about saving time. As you can see, I've been saving so much time today it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm being smart aleck too. I'm being, I'm trying to be funny. Da, da, da. Okay, now that's not what you want to do. Okay, so one thing that I learned over the years of doing this where I've done, like if you do like a hundred at a time or something, like, because I have, you want to keep, once you cut this, your pairs together. You wouldn't want to cut this and put it with this because a little, sometimes it'll be off. So what she tells you to do is, I'm gonna show you what she tells you to do and then I'm gonna tell you what I do. So what she tells you to do is take this little Creative Grids ruler or any ruler and draw lines a quarter inch away from the center. That's what she tells you to do. I don't wanna do that because I don't want to um, have to take more time than I already don't have and I'm gonna just cut it so just cut and it's gonna give me the same thing because I'm gonna sew a quarter inch away so I don't have to draw the line and then worry about that later so that's one thing that I kind of came up with in the last couple of years and you just want to keep this like you know somewhat in the center it doesn't have to be exact and because I cut it bigger you definitely don't have to be exact so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam on both of these, but I'm gonna keep this together and this together so that when I do the next step, these are together and these are together. Now, I just start right here where the smaller fabric is. You don't have to start all the way on the edge. And I'm just gonna go real fast like I always do. So there's one. And this is quick. I mean, you're going to have eight flying geese in no time. So I'll keep those together. 
So at home, I usually have a design board and I'll keep them on the design board together. So, almost done. So, in that quick amount of time, even with adding that extra starch, still quicker, you're halfway done with eight flying geese. You don't see it yet, but you are. So keep these together and I'm gonna iron and set my seam on this one. Press to one side, then press open. Now, I do think this is good to press open on this because you're gonna have a lot of seams in the very center of the block. And if you didn't press open, you're gonna have a lot of bulk. So, and again, one set of these makes four, and we need eight, so we have two sets. Are there any questions? Yes. We have lots of questions, super chats, new members, so I'm going to go down the list from the very beginning. New YouTube member, V Perry 100 welcome. And then new YouTube member, Tracy Mengel. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. And then Linda Gillespie had said, it's almost our birthday, Kimberly. Happy birthday week, friend, although I barely celebrate the day, let alone the week. LOL. Thank you. Yeah, my birthday is Sunday. I'm going to be 47. Woo. I'm going to be 47. <laughs> I feel every bit of it, too. Aww. I'm just being but I'm excited because I Kevin asked me where I wanted to go eat, and I said P.F. Chang's. Oh. So hopefully we can make that happen. Puff Chang's. Yes. I just say Puff Chang. You do what? Uh, I said Puff Chang. P.F. Chang's. Oh, okay. Silly. So now what you do is you put the two together, and you want it to look like this. So you have one. All your colors don't touch. So you put it there, and you're going to see that, see how it's not exact? It doesn't matter. Because I've cut it so big, it's not going to matter. So again, you do that. And then we're going to cut here. Now, again, in her instructions, she tells you to draw the lines and then stitch on the lines and then cut. But I don't want to do that because I don't want to draw the lines. I just want to cut one time to save time. So again, cut there. Cut there, and then once we sew and iron, we're gonna have eight flying geese that we're gonna trim down. So now I'm just gonna sew with the quarter inch seam and let Lily talk. Mm. And I'll try to sew a little bit slower. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we had a super chat from Margaret Forrest for Canadian dollar twenty seven ninety nine, and she put a little dancing pair that says you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then our next super chat was from Deborah Weidrick for $5. And Deborah says, receive serendipity. Beautiful fabric and box. Kimberly, do you cut the background fabric into smaller pieces before your starch? And if so, what size? Um, I would cut two half yards to start and starch those. That's what I'll do. I'll probably cut two half yards off, cut, starch those, and then um, starch as I go. I'm not going to starch that whole piece. That would be too much. And I will talk more about it on Thursday, but the one thing that I will do, well, in the serendipity section, can you just write down on that document right there, borders, and then we'll talk, I'll talk about starching and all that. Ashley, can you pull me a kit too? And then that will help me explain what we're doing when we get to that section. So you just press, just keep pressing, set your seam, press open, and then we're going to trim them down. And you're going to have eight flying geese, and then we can finally do our block. Because, you know, it's like um, 9.50. And yeah. And, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today is... Oh. All right, we have another new YouTube member, Teresa G. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you. And new YouTube member, Suha 
Alna Bani. Welcome, Siwa. Also, if I ever mispronounce anyone's name, please feel free to correct me. I want to pronounce everyone's names as they are. So if they, okay, so I was thinking about this. This is funny. If yes. there was a YouTube award for people who live stream and know how to say names, it would be Lily. Oh. Because I watch a lot of live streams and nobody gets as close as Lily. Thank you. So she should okay. get like a, there should be, there should be like little YouTube awards. Like the, like the Oscars, but for YouTube. Yeah. For, for, for YouTubers who, there you go. who go live and the internet cuts out. That should be an award too. Oh, thanks. That's very sweet. I do my best. Uh, super chat from Judy Hampton for $10. And Judy says, thank you, Fat Quarter Shop. I look so forward to Friday morning to see what you have for me. If only I was rich. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, you're very generous, Judy. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. And a lot of what we do here is you don't have to buy a kit. You can use fabric from yourself. That's mm -hmm. why we're offering lots of freebies so that if you are on a budget, you can spend it more on fabric. Now I am going to use a rotating mat on this. And I'm going to get my ruler. And we're going to cut it down real quick and then... Then I'll show you one and then um, Lily can talk. Okay, so this is the perfect size for this. Her ruler, okay, the one thing that I would do on this ruler is I would add the little cardboard dots to the back. I don't have those here right now, but at home, mine has cardboard all over it. Just when you're putting those dots, the grips, mm -hmm. just don't put it where your words or your lines are. That's all. And it's very clearly marked, so you want to line up the um, angles, and you want this top right there to touch. So you have to be careful to not cut into the next flying geese over here, so I don't cut here first, because if I do, I might cut into over here. So the first thing I do is I cut the top and the bottom, and that way I don't interfere with my other and then I rotate. Now, you have to flip the piece to do the other side. And the key to this is this line goes here and this right here should hit your points. So that hits that point, that hits that point and you have a perfect flying geese and you have wasted less fabric than doing it the traditional way. Now the one thing that you do have to do when you do this method, and this is pretty important, this little, uh, little piece right there, you want to cut it off. Because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of bulk right there. Mm. So just cut that little tab off, kind of like a little dog ear. And you're going to do all eight this way. So now, Lily, you just take the show. <laughs> All right. Because I'm going to try to concentrate and not make any more mistakes. <laughs> All right. We had another super chat from Lori Roth for $9.99. I'm going to try to time this out so Super Piggy doesn't block the action happening on screen too long. Perfect. Thank you. And she put a pair that's laughing, I think is what it's doing. Oh, uh, maybe my jokes are funny today. Oh. I'm trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I'm trying to be funny, but I don't know. All right. And then we have another super chat from Ileana Fernandez for $4.99. And Ileana says, I love our Friday mornings together. Thank you. Aww. We do too, Ileana. And another super chat from Deb Keller for $9.99. And she put a little like super pair, like superhero flying pair. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. And a new YouTube member, Pam Mares. Welcome, Pam. Woohoo! Thank you. I think the confetti cannon's one of my favorite things here. <laughs> okay, and then super chat from Randy E for five dollars, and Randy says Kimberly is making it work. I am. Yes, yes, she is. That's pretty much what everybody needs to do right now in life: is make it work and stop complaining so much. Because you know what? If you can't find the funny in your life and joke around, then you you got nothing. You gotta be 
You gotta just be like, okay, we're gonna go. I always say, go with the flow, get through today. Mm -hmm. And if I'm having a really bad day, I'm just like, oh, we're just gonna get to tomorrow. When we get to tomorrow, it's gonna start over. Yeah. So. Okay, and another super chat from Shannon Doolittle for $5. And they said, as a beginner, y'all have been super helpful. Hello from your neighbor in Pflugerville. Oh, oh wow. Pflugerville. My best friend lives in Pflugerville on 2nd Street. Oh, no. Downtown Pflugerville, 2nd Street. My favorite thing about Pflugerville is all the PF bumper stickers everywhere and like the everything written. Because, you know, Pflugerville's written with a PF. Uh -huh. Yeah. So then the, like there's like little jokes everywhere there that for things that are pronounced just with an F, like Pflugerville is, but it has an extra Right, my friend is also from that family, the Pfluger family. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. He, the house he lives in was his grandmother's house, and she lived in it her whole life, I think. I don't know. That's super cool. But, um, and what was cool about it, because I called him during the thing to make sure they were okay, because they have two little kids, and they had a, what do you call it, like a stove? Like an old-timey stove still oh. in the house, and so that's how they stayed warm. He was like, oh yeah, we were fine. We have all this stuff from... Oh, like a wood stove? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yep, so his kids just slept by a wood stove. I mean, him and his wife and his kids. They just slept. I mean, it's a pretty big room. It's like a... Yeah. Sorry, I'm just going on talking about random stuff. No, you're good. Also, I want to say thank you to everyone in the comments. Everyone's being real sweet right now. So thank you for that. And then another super chat from Shelly Murphy for two dollars and Shelly says hello from Fort Worth also oh, a neighbor thank you my brother lives in Argyle which is right by there okay. and new YouTube member Linda Phelps welcome Linda We had a super chat from Marsha Baker for $5, and she says, Happy birthday, Kimberly. You are a young chick, but you don't realize it until you're about 70. Y'all uh, are awesome. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you. I was I'm surprised somebody even remembered my birthday, to be honest. <laughs> I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, it's the 7th, right? Yep, it's the 7th. Yeah, because your birthday's on a 7th, and my birthday's on a 7th, so easy for me to remember. And Alicia Mullins had said, I don't know how she cuts around that ruler so well. I've tried it, can't do it. My blade doesn't stay against the ruler as I go around. Maybe there's a trick? I would say it's probably time. Thank you. It's probably just practice. Um, I really do well with this ruler, which is the ergonomic. I'm cutting the four squares that go on the corners, by the way. Um, I really struggle with the ones that are not ergonomic, so I think it's just whatever holds best in your hand. But I, I mean, I also, one thing I do is I press this down pretty hard. If I've been quilting a, like a day, my arm will hurt because I press so hard on here because then it makes this, it won't move if I press hard. So I do press pretty hard. Um, and I can tell the next day because that's my exercise. That's my cardio right there. That's my cardio for today. <laughs> okay, so these need to be cha these need to be together, right here. We need to make four of these. So I'm gonna just make sure the points are all going the same way. So you don't want to be like this. That would be funny though. And I'm gonna just pin these and then stitch them with a quarter inch seam, and then we will be ready to do the final block. And this is gonna be the all time record for the longest block ever. <laughs> but this block is really cool. I like it. And again, it's designed by Zen Chic. And when you try this method, you'll have to see if you like it, but you get, you can see that you get perfect flying geese and you don't get floppy, you know, you don't have to draw on a line, you don't have to do any of that funny stuff. And you can knock out a bunch doing it this way. Any of that funny stuff. Question from Candace K, which is actually a question I've had before, so I'm curious. So we'd need that specific size flying geese ruler to do just that size right. There isn't a ruler that cuts multiple size flying geese? Correct. 
and she has a small that has two and she has a large that has two. Now, do I use it and cut different sizes? Yes. And when I do that, I just have to use one of these rulers and I have to be real careful. So if I'm doing a weird size, I'll make the next size up bigger and trim down. Mm. But I'm hoping to make some more triangle paper on the triangle paper um, by It's So Emma so that I don't have to do that mm -hmm. for some smaller sizes. Because that is, I usually do make mistakes when I do that. And I could, maybe when we do the American Quilter Sew Along, I can show that. So hopefully my points match right there. And since this is kind of a lighter fabric, if your points don't match, it's not gonna be as noticeable. And just um, do what works for you. I mean, some people are super OCD, some people aren't. Do whatever you think is good for you in your house. Um. Raleen H. said there's a ruler called Calling All the Geese by Eleanor Burns that cuts multiple sizes. I love it and use it all the time, including today. Okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried that one. That's cool. Funny comment from Tina Rutten. She says maybe they sew on FAFs in Pflugerville. Huh. <laughs> That's funny. I've never seen the 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 um, bumper stickers with the PF, but I don't pay attention that much, so uh, that's probably why. Yeah, sometimes when you go into Pflugerville or if you're closer to that area, you'll start seeing them. And it's oh. literally just a circle, and it says PF on it. Oh, that's where my dad is buried, actually. Actually, everyone in my family is buried there. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. I don't, I, it was like, because we're from Austin, you know, most people who live here are not from Austin. And my mm -hmm. uncle died when I was four months old and my dad bought like four plots or something and so oh. he bought some plots and so that's where everybody is mm -hmm. and it was kind of like you know back then Austin isn't Austin wasn't what it is now so there mm -hmm. weren't a million flu there weren't a million um all the what do you call it um burial places that there are now so mm -hmm. so I'm sure that's yeah because my mom wants to be buried by her brother mm. So now my dad's there, both sets of grandparents. I mean, everybody, I haven't been to a funeral that isn't there. I'm not kidding. I have not been to one, My every grandparent, everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Woo! So does that mean your dad's dog is there as well? Oh, my dad's dog is there. Yes, he is. <laughs> my dad's dog, that stupid dog, he was a stinky dog. Aww. Okay, so I'm going to stitch down here. No, he had a dog, and his dog's name was Chewy. I'll Chewy. tell this, this is a funny story. So when I was in high school, I was a senior. Now, don't start putting comments. Back then, there used to be things called pet stores and they sold dogs, okay? We're talking about the 1990s. My dad, there was this pet store in the mall and we always had a lot of dogs, like a lot, but my mom always hated the dogs. Oh my gosh, my mom, she just, she was not a fan. Well, he kept, I don't know, he never even went to the mall, but he kept going to this pet store. I have no idea why. And it was driving us all crazy. And we're like, just go buy the dog. So he bought the dog because I was going to college and I think he wanted somebody to hang out with. Mm -hmm. And that dog, he fed that dog so much stuff. Mm -hmm. One time I almost killed the dog with chocolate almost. Gosh, <gasps> if I would have done that. Oh, it was an accident. I had left out some cookies and he ate oh, them. Oh yeah, you told that story. Yes. Yeah, but so. The story is that I guess him and my mom had made an agreement that whoever, so the dog died right before my dad did. And so they, I guess my dad had the dog cremated. I didn't even know that was a thing. Cause this is a while ago. This is before all this kind of stuff got popular. And I guess they had an agreement that whoever died first got buried with the dog's ashes. And so my dad died. We, I mean, we didn't know he was gonna die. So we're at the funeral home. My mom pulls out these ashes, and I'm like, oh my God, you'll have lost your mind. And um, I guess my dad had made sure that somebody else knew because, you know, he wanted to make sure it was really done. Mm -hmm. So my sister-in-law, out of everyone in that room, was the only one who knew what was going on. We're, me and my brother and 
Kevin, my husband, we're just like looking at each other like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh Lord, this is, yeah. He loved that dog though. Mm -hmm. It was a little, it was a Lhasa Apsa. The fat one, a little fat Lhasa Apsa. Oh. His name was Chewy. Chewy. He kind of, I think I named him. He looked like Chewbacca, kind of. Oh. <laughs> like with the hair, you know? Yeah, fluffy. Yeah, like the same color, too. Oh. But yeah, no, he bought him at a dog store when that was a thing. I know that's not appropriate now, but um, that used to be a thing. Mm -hmm. I'm old, see? I was telling Lily and Ashley that, like, I was watching something, I think it was Netflix, and they were saying a word, and I was like, I don't understand what they're talking about. They were using a word that's not appropriate, but it doesn't mean what it used to mean, and so I had to Google it. I'm like, wait, what? That's not even supposed to be a derogatory word. That's supposed to be like something else. That's how old I am that I don't know what's going on. Sometimes I have to ask Emma, what does this mean? And last night, she was trying to explain something to me, and I was like, I even think you're confused, because I don't think you're explaining it right, but I just chose to let her think she knows what she's talking about. Because, you know, when you're 13, you think you know everything. So, I was telling Lily, her best friend, okay, so she's 13, she's about to be 14, and her best friend is 16. And they were supposed to have a party last week. Well, usually the parties are just at these little, these girls' houses. So I just assumed, you know, they're just gonna go to this little girl's house. So the mom said, drop them off at the dance studio at such and such time. They're going on a party bus. I'm like, you are what? You're going on a party bus and you are, she goes, yeah, we're just gonna drive around and sing songs. I was like, okay, you just do that then. I've never been on a party bar bus in my life. Oh man. I don't even know what it is, really. I, I've never been on one. I was like, okay. I mean, the parents are super conservative, so I'm sure there's no, nothing else going on on there. That sh okay, so look, that happened. Mm -hmm. That is the same exact spot right here. See? Oh, uh, uh-huh. Yep. I'm going to leave it. And I'm just going to leave, um, I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, so she's going on a party bus tonight, and I'm just like, oh, I gotta press these open. I don't know what, I don't know what to think. When you have kids, you're just like, oh my word, can I just get through? Can we just get them to college? Can I, can I somehow get her to be an adult? Let's see. Right, we do have a question from Ileana Fernandez. Uh, she says, can I use flying geese paper for the six inch block, the one inch by two inch? Can you pull all the flying geese paper or pull it up on the website real yeah. quick? Because I need to, we need to put a sign with the sizes on the screen because I don't have them memorized yet. Um, and I'm going to look because I'm not sure. Yep, you can. You can use the ISE-774. Now for the three inch, we don't have paper <clears throat> that small. We eventually will though. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I need to memorize those. I don't have those memorized or the square and the square, so we can maybe put those right there and I'll have a clue. All right. We have a new YouTube member, Weba Campos. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll tell y'all what I'm going to do for spring break. My kids are going to either love me or hate me. I'm not sure which. We're gonna go to Enchanted Rock, which, okay, to me, that sounds like the worst possible, like I have zero interest in going to Enchanted Rock. Like when I say zero interest, that means like negative 20. Cool. I don't like to be outside, I hate it, and I'm so out of shape. But we're going to Enchanted Rock, and then we're gonna to go to a ranch. And we're gonna like stay on a ranch for a couple days. And I'm gonna make them turn off their phones. I'm gonna, well, they don't, actually only one of my kids has a phone, I guess. I'm going to make them turn their iPads off. Emma's so bad. She's an instigator. So she's like, I got a phone when I was 11. The boys need a phone. I'm like, uh, no, they don't. Oh. I'm like, they do not need a phone. You need to hush your mouth. She's like, well, they think they're getting a phone. I'm like, why? Because you're running your mouth and telling them? I'm pretty sure that's why they think they're getting a phone. Mm. And I'm like, well, because she had dance. And like, she would always have to call. And then one time she had to call using like the dance director's phone number. And she's like, mom, I'm a little embarrassed. And I was like, okay. Hmm. Fine. I'll get you a phone.
and you can see, see how I left this connected? I left it connected so I don't make a mistake and accidentally put it on the wrong way on the next part. That's why I leave it connected. Another new YouTube member, Ruby Stephanie. Welcome, Ruby. So right here, when you look, can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit off right there, but I'm not gonna change it because it's such a light fabric, you'll never see it. But it is a little bit, like there's a, like a 16th of an inch too much here, but because it's light, I'm gonna leave it. See, earlier Teresa was asking when my birthday is. It is in September. I will be 27 this year. Are you serious? Yeah, we're 20 years apart, about ish. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my word, I can't. I, you know, I, one time Lily was like, you know, I don't know, like I would never want to go back, no matter what I think. I would never go back to that. I would never mm -hmm. go back to the 20s. I would never go back to high school. I would never go back. Because oh, yeah, when I look back, I'm like, I was a fool. <laughs> you know, like when you're in high school, you think you know everything. When you're in college, you think you know everything. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just like, can I get through today? Can I get through today? <laughs> Let's, get through to Let's get through today without one of my kids emailing my other kid's teacher that they're not doing their homework. How about that? Oh. <laughs> that kid, I swear. I cannot believe he did that. Kevin and I, we just laugh. We're just like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You just have to like make a joke about it because mm -hmm. they're only 11. I can't imagine what those boys are going to be doing when they're older. Mm -hmm. I think parenting would be easier if kids were similar. And I have four kids that have nothing. Mm. I have two that are similar, but they're such a different age that, that um, it doesn't help. My twins are like opposite, completely opposite, but they never, they never argue. And I think that is just crazy. They never argue and they don't have anything in common. So, okay, I'm gonna press these open and then I'm gonna trim it down and then we're gonna, woo, an hour and 15 minutes for a nine inch block. That's a world record of the slowest block I've ever made in my entire life. Cause it's really not that hard of a block. But hopefully, I mean, hopefully something I've done here has been helpful. I know that some people say, I really wish you would just do the block the way it is. But that's why I do these videos, because we give you that block the way it is. And I want to show you something different. If I just got on here and cut fabric and never showed you any tips, there would be no reason for you to watch. So, I'm going to move the saw machine. Yes. Yeah, so we can like get that out of the way. Oh, ow. and then I'll put this here and then I'm going to trim it up. So when I'm trimming this one, you do have these points. So you want to make sure you don't chop them off. When I was a beginner, I would chop them off a little bit on accident. So when I'm trimming this block, I will use one of these lines on this seam or this seam, one of the seams. Make sure it's straight on one of them and then just trim down. And I'm barely going to cut anything off. Really, I'm just going to be cutting these little threads that are sticking out off. So I barely cut anything off. And that is because we just did the Eleanor Burns method. And when you do that, you're not going to have a lot of waste. You just want to make sure you're neat, like right here, your ruler doesn't go past your point. You would rather cut off less than more. And this is a totally optional step. To be honest, your quilt's gonna look exactly the same even if you don't do this. I do it because I just, I think it's like a satisfaction of, oh, it's done. So, 
Now I'm going to show you all the blocks I've done so far from this collection. This is Apricot and Ash. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the box you threw. I can grab it. Oh, sorry. I can't get to it. Sorry. It's good. It's funny. Thanks. Okay. So we keep our box. We keep our blocks in this box from Target. Blocks in the box. Sorry. We don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> It's the floor, it's not me. The floor is cement, it's the so floor. I'm not throwing it. It's just dropping like that. So these are, I'll have three, when I'm done, I'll have three green, three peach, and three. So yeah, I have three, three peach, three green, and then by next week, I will have one more gray, and then I'm gonna put this into something. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna put this into, but I'll put it into something. And I'll probably use this as the background, but that'll probably be something that I'll have to figure out this weekend. Mm -hmm. I could do just a long table runner, like a farmhouse style. Mm -hmm. I could do um, sashing in between. I could put them on point and make it really big. There's all kinds of things you can do. So I will try to find a pattern or come up with something and I'll show y'all after spring break. So let me know what questions y'all have on this block before I move on to everything else. Any, I'll let any extra questions roll in. Okay, from Terry F. Sorry, F. Think. From Terry F. Think. Uh, so, which method do you recommend for beginners to make the flying geese? For beginners, I think the paper is easier because you're gonna. It's gonna be more accurate. But you would need to press that second seam to the inside for your seams to not be bulky. But all three of them are easy. I've done the Eleanor Burns method for 19 years. I mean, if I did my math right. Um, so. Yeah. That's yeah. 19? Is it 19? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then Princess P. Holly Martin earlier was asking, can you remind me which Bella or Kona is the whitest? 98. 98 is the whitest. 97 and 200 are what I use the most. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little break and you get to see Lily's dress. Ooh. I'm so excited for y'all to see her dress and I will be right back. I'm coming guys, I'm coming. All right. I'm gonna sneak up on you guys, let's see. How can I do this? Way. Hey, yeah. Crouching down. Hello. <laughs> Ta-da! Hello, everyone. Let me take my mask off here. I'm Lily, for those of you who may not know. And here is the dress made out of the yardage from the My Favorite Color is moda um the SKU number for this is 9900-10 and yep here's the dress i made it out of the simplicity pattern number 8085 and yeah she's got a little bows over here and this belt i actually just happen to have this belt the pattern comes with instructions for a belt uh, but it did not work out when I tried to make it the first time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for this pink belt I have. Um, there's like bias tape that I made at home with some of the lavender Bella. So that same color is one of these dots somewhere around here. Uh, yeah. Did I, oh, my earring is still there. It looked like I had lost it for a second. But yes, here it is. I will do one last little turn Z around Z. Woo. Oh, and then, uh, shoes I am wearing. Woo all solids, all, all Bella style things. So very excited to show you guys that. Also wear bright lipstick because what else am I gonna wear bright lipstick to? Matches the belt a little bit here. But so yes, very excited to finally show you guys the dress. Big reveal for the dress. Um, it fits very well. The only thing I would add is there is a separate pattern or like an alternate pattern within the pattern that has like these pockets you attach right here. 
I think I'm going to attach them to this one because uh, it did not have another way to attach pockets to this dress. So I think I might go that route. Yes. Okay. I saw a question earlier from Sew so It Your Style. Uh, they said, hi, Lily, what machine are you using? I use the Burnett B38 at home. Uh, it has a lot of funky features, especially for garment making, like that zigzag stitch and all sorts of cool stitches. Um, my only complaint is I wish it sewed faster, especially after trying uh, the Juki here at work a couple times. I'm like, she needs to go faster. Like the bunny rabbit on that one is not like the bunny rabbit on this one. Uh, but yes, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is Bonnie and Camille's Quilt Bee. Uh, they are on month four of the Shine On Quilt Along. Uh, you can follow Camille at Thimble Blossoms on Instagram for updates on that and share your blocks with the hashtag, hashtag Shine On Sampler Quilt Along. But yes, the Quilt Along follows this book, the Bonnie and Camille Quilt Bee. Uh, working on months, March's blocks, March's month four, and they are working on the cross stitch block. And I have a pop up for that, but I will have to run back behind the camera to show you all. But the cross stitch block can be found on page 96. So I'll flash that up there real quick. 96, that block. And there's cute goodies to go with it, as many of you guys already know. The bag and the, sorry, this is hard. Uh, the needle minder over here. Uh, I have this bag at home. I love it so much because it is like nice and sturdy. And it's got that like inner lining with the zipper right here. One of my favorite bags that I use, especially to carry two things to and from work. Uh, but I'm not seeing any other questions at the moment, so I will hand it back over to Kimberly and pop this block up for you guys while I'm at it. Do, 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 do. Yay! Reveal. <laughs> See, she's so cute. Oh, and real quick, here is the block that Camille posted on Instagram. It's so pretty. And if you are a cross stitcher, we are starting the uh, so stitch along with it next week. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Oh, sorry. There we go. <laughs> Yay! So for um, if you don't know, every year we raise money for Make a Wish. We're over twenty seven thousand dollars right now. Thank you so much. Um, we are gonna top that off with twenty thousand. Mark Dunn is gonna top that off with ten thousand. We're hoping to grant ten wishes. Now, we have pushed this back several times because of what is going on and the snowstorm and the everything. If you pre-ordered the kit, it should have shipped to you. You should be getting it any day. If it hasn't shipped, just call us because maybe your credit card didn't go through or maybe you didn't see the PayPal invoice. Next Thursday, I'm going to do a live demo. We're going to hope it goes a lot better than today <laughs> um, with no internet breakage. But we're going to do a live demo, and what I'm going to do is show you how to cut all of your fabric for block one or row one and i'm going to piece just one block and i'm going to give you different tips and um i will talk you through right now how to prepare your fabric so if you bought the kit this pattern came with it you as a as a bonus for buying the kit you get the full pattern up front everyone else will get the pattern that week so we'll put the We'll put the um, um, instructions up. They're free for row one next week. Now, this is your background right here. So I'm going to tell you how I would starch it. And it's going to take me a little bit. I haven't starched mine yet. So mm -hmm. so I'm going to look at it. So this first page it has your fabric requirements, which is what's in your kit. Now, we did this year, we're including cutting for every single fabric so that you know exactly what you're cutting each month and you will have, see how much room you have left over. And that means you have plenty of room to starch. So when you are starching the half yards, starch them as one piece, do not chop them down. So that would be what I would do there. That's, these are all the half yards. For the background, included in your kit is five and a quarter yards. 
What I'm going to do with mine, now this is not gonna be what the instructions are written because a lot of people do not like. When I have written instructions for length of fabric, we have gotten complaints. So I'm gonna explain it to you by standing over here and showing you. Okay. Let me see if, okay, good. So this person actually pieced it that way. So we write the instructions where you would cut your borders with the fabric and sew them together. That's fine. Most people like that. I don't, I cut my length of fabric. We don't write patterns length of fabric because customers do not like it and um, they think it wastes fabric and for, you know, just based on feedback. So what I'm gonna do, my widest border is 66 and a half. I'm gonna cut a 76 inch piece wide, put a note on it borders, and I'm gonna starch all the rest as half yard pieces. And then when I get run out of those pieces, I will cut my borders and then I will use the leftovers for blocks. So when I go home, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna starch all of these as one piece. I'm gonna cut a 76 inch piece, set it aside, and then I'm gonna cut all the rest into half yards and cut it up. And then this is binding. So I'm gonna start, that's how I'm gonna starch. And then in your box, as you go, you can keep your, you can keep your blocks and everything in here after you finish them. And we do have some foundation paper in here for you if you bought the kit. And I'm gonna demo it with those. Now, if you, um, don't want to do the paper you don't have to you don't have to buy the paper we also include for free exactly how to do it if you don't have the paper so you don't have to buy anything extra we um, are just giving you some options so next thursday i'm going to go live i'm going to have all of my fabric starched but i'm going to cut everything on camera and i'm just going to assemble one block and then when i come back the two weeks later i will have my row put together all right, that's Thursday, March 11th. At what time? 9 a.m. Central Time. It was supposed to be March 15th, but I've decided that I'm going to take my kids to a ranch, and I'm going to, like, see if um, I can make them, like, feed the animals and stuff. I'm not kidding. They're just They need to get off their iPads. And I know two of them are going to love it and two of them are going to hate it, and I think it's going to be hilarious because I'm not going to do any of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put this inside. Stronger Together. So excited about this. We raised $13,000 for UNCF. That is way more than I thought we would, so I'm so proud of us. And here's the quilt. The top is what's on your right. Yeah, I, I'm i not gonna be too finicky today. To me, it looks good anyway. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. The check has already been written and mailed, so we're excited about that. We went over serendipity, and if you haven't made your Make-A-Wish donation, please donate. Now, speaking of serendipity, I want to show you two different quilts that you can make with it. So the goal of serendipity is to raise money for Make-A-Wish. We're offering you these free patterns, free instructions. Please donate to Make-A-Wish in our link below. We had two people make quilts for the charity to show you how you can make it look different than the one behind me. This one is, um, Doug Lico colored it. The fabric is Hopewell by Joe Morton. Dana Goyer pieced it and Doug quilted it. Mm. It's gorgeous. So this fabric and the fabric I'm going to show you next is going to, can we move this, Lily? Yes. Sorry. I'm afraid I'm going to knock the iron over. Um, and I'm not standing up because my back hurts, so sorry. Um, so this is how you can make it traditional. And if you wanted to do something like this, just look at your fabric requirements, buy some half yards. It tells you exactly what background binding, what you need. And then will you grab those two little thingies? And then I'll show you from the front in a second. So again, this is Hopewell by Joe Morton for Moda. And the binding, this is a, the 
finding is from. Okay, so I will push this forward and then show you. It's so pretty. So thank you to Doug for putting that together. And I love how the, the flying geese look in this quilt. Okay, yeah, look at that. They're not next to each other, but oh my gosh, look at that. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. This looks so good. So if you um, want to join us, we're super excited. So that's the first quilt I have to show you. The second quilt was made by Lisa Alexander. And the collection is Sanctuary by Three Sisters. Now on the back, she did the piece backing. Doug did not. So. I'm going to put it this way. I love the quilting on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from the top camera, you can see, oh, that's so funny. Okay, mm -hmm. do, 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 do. this is a pieced backing. It's also a free pattern that will be offered at the end of the program. And it's just a fun way to have a different backing. And then this is Sanctuary by Three Sisters. Both Sanctuary and Hope will both ship in March. Oh, your shirt matches this one. It does? A little bit. A little bit. Okay, so let me. Mm. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yes, I love this quilting. So those are two different options. So if you didn't buy the kit or you're trying to decide fabric, those are two options to show you. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is oh my goodness okay so yeah don't show me a little bit I can do it on the floor and do this <laughs> sorry it's my spool of thread went on a vacation oh, I was like, What's going went to on? the very back of the <laughs> container Okay, so this is a new book by Lisa Bonchin. It's called American Gatherings. I'm going to flip through it to show you the projects within the book, and then I'm going to talk about her sew along. And I'm going to just flip fast because I don't want you to be able to get the instructions. Mm -hmm. So this book has lots of content, and that is amazing. That is called, Kimberly would never attempt that. That's what they should call that. Oh. This one's cute. Mm -hmm. So tons of options in this book. I'm gonna come back to this one. And the back has smaller projects. So you can make a pillow. I might have to make that too. This is wool. This is also wool. And then she's got some templates in the back. So, this is going to be an upcoming sew along. So to put the quilt together, you do need the book. The book is again called American Gathering. The 20 blocks in the quilt are going to be free on Lisa Bonjean's blog. Her blog is Pimp primitivegatherings.us and then you click on the blog from there. Now on her YouTube channel, which is called Primitive Gatherings Lisa Bonjean. Stitching, Stitch with Lisa Bonjean. Sorry, Stitch with Lisa Bonjean. I watched it yesterday. She shows you how to starch and how to get prepared for the stitch along. The fabric has not arrived from Moda yet. And so once the fabric starts arriving to stores and customers, she will start the sew along. So I am going to sew along with this and I'm going to do exactly like she does. The fat quarter bundle of American gatherings is plenty to make it. Now for the quilt top, this is what I'm going to use. The skew is, oh, 1040-42. So I'm going to use this color, 1040-42. It's going to finish at 70 by 80. Let me see. Oh, 
Um, oh, 67 by 70. So um, I'm gonna starch this. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna starch my borders first and then cut the rest down. So I'm excited for you to um, join Lisa and I in this. Now this is Lisa Stitch Along. I'm just having fun with her and sewing along. If you want to know how I learned the starch method, go watch her video yesterday because she shows exactly what she taught me. The only difference between what she does and I do is she uses the firm and I use the original. So mine is lighter and so her fabric is um, thicker. So it's up to you which starch you use and you don't have to use starch. That's just something that I learned from her. Now I did test several Aurifils. And I started, I thought that using a darker gray would be better. But when I started, I had too many. Here, I'll show you one block. Surprise, one block. Ooh. When I was doing the darker, um, the darker thread that I started with, I was seeing my thread come through here. It was just too much. So I ended up going with 2600 and I used a very small stitch length and you can't see it. You would think mm -hmm. this looks so light, right? It looks mm -hmm. like it's going to show it's going to show here. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. So and you can't see my stitches look. You cannot see them. So I thought using darker would be better. Now I do want to let you know Lisa mentioned a color number in her video that was not 2600. She's using a different color. So you can go check out her video which she suggests and then decide what you want to do. But I decided to go with 2600 and I was shocked at how well it worked. It's just amazing that you cannot see it. I just, I was shocked. So that is what I'm going to do. Now I also wanted to let you know she's making four versions of this quilt and she will be doing four different backgrounds. So she's got one that's light, one that's dark, and then she's gonna do a grunge and then I don't know what the other one is. She will be raising money for Hogs for Heroes, so she will be asking for donations for that. So once she has where she wants the money sent, I will provide that on this channel also. And super excited about that. So let me know if you have any questions on that. Now, remember, this is Lisa Bonjean Sew Along. I have nothing to do with it except I'm her friend and want to sew it. And um, so any questions you have on it, I'm happy to answer, but definitely would direct you to her channel also. Mm -hmm. All right, from Debbie Simatic, Simatic, sorry, the pattern shows the same block throughout. Are each block supposed to be different? Yes, so that's the sew along part. Oh. So in the book, it's one block. For free, she gives you 20 different stars oh. and all of your blocks will be unfinished 10 and a quarter by 12 and a half. The one thing I would recommend is the CGR 12 ruler. It's just a 12 and a half inch square ruler. That helped me square up my blocks mm -hmm. because I did make my blocks and my stripes bigger and cut down. Now, I'm not gonna show that on here because she's gonna show you her method and what she does. So I'm not gonna start showing tips on what I do because I feel like that would be rude and impeding on what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But you do see that they came out perfectly, but I did cut and then I, I have one right here I can show you. This ruler right here. And the reason it's good is, okay. I, of course, made my stripes go over here bigger and over here bigger and over here bigger because I'm kind of crazy. But look, it is exactly 10 and a quarter by 12 and a half. And I was able to trim it down with just one ruler. So I did this one way. And then when I trimmed this, it was this way. So this, this ruler is really good to have. Mm -hmm. And most people already have... Um, most people already have that ruler. I'm just writing some notes down, but that's... Go when, ahead, Lily. When does the sew-along start? 
It starts once the fabric ships from Moda, and you would just follow Lisa Bonjean's channel, and she's going to announce all of that. I'm just going to be sewing along. I am making this for someone else, actually. I'm not going to keep this quilt. I know exactly who I'm making it for. Um, and I always like to support designers. I always want to support other people's companies, and Lisa has been so great to me over the years, and she's the one who taught me the starch method. I mean, come on. My quilts are amazing because she taught me that. So I want to give as much credit as I can to her, and um, yeah. Okay, the next thing I'm sewing along with is over here. Let me just put this right here. A Quilting Life. Now she is doing a free sew along. This is Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. She is doing a free block of the month on her blog, which is A Quilting Life. Just search A Quilting Life blog. Mm -hmm. And in her pattern, I printed this out. She gives you, this is completely free. She gives you a six inch block and a 12 inch block. Now, just like I showed you, I put my little sticky note over it so I don't make a mistake. I am making the 12 inch block. Now with this, I'm using the Flea Market Collection by Lori Holt. I'm gonna show you the two previous blocks to the left and the right. So this, and I'm gonna show you why I did and kind of my colorway, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Now these are the only blocks I've seen. I have not seen the future ones. But what I decided when I got this first block done is I really thought this brown was really nice. And so I wanted to be able to figure out a way in every block to make this brown accent. So that was my first thing that I decided. And when I was looking at this block, right here, it is designed with no corners here. So this is designed to just be this fabric right here. But I felt I needed a little bit more pop of color because this doesn't have that much background showing and this doesn't have that much background and I felt like if I left this here background it would the blue would not pop as much. So what I did is I cut four three inch squares for these and added these as corner squares. The other thing that I did that's different than her is on your hourglass pieces that are C, D, and E I cut them at five and a half instead of five and a quarter. And then when I was done, I trimmed them down. So those are the, that's the two things that I did. It's exactly the same. It's just when I do hourglass, I cut them a quarter inch bigger, trimmed down with a square creative grids ruler. And these are my first three blocks. And this is something where you can follow her YouTube channel. She did do a video on it yesterday. And this is all on her blog, and I sew along with her every year. And what I do is I just pick a collection I like and stitch with it. Now, the one thing that I do do different, and she's okay with it, is at the end of the year, I put it into a different setting than she does to show it different. So that I'm showing you how I use my color and how you can do something else with it so that you don't feel like you always have to do exactly what the designer is doing. So those are my first three blocks, and she releases those on the first Thursday of every month, I believe. I think that's right. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so that is one sew along that I'm doing that's completely free, you don't have to buy anything. Now, of course, this sew along is also free. It's just, if you wanna put it into the quilt setting she has, you do need the book. Which I think that's fair. I mean, she is giving it to you free. The next free sew along, <laughs> I'm gonna show you some fun stuff in a second. The first three blocks are here. So this is one of the first blocks, second block, third block. And I am using the Prim Collection by Lori Holt and I am only using four fabrics. So I'm using one, two, three, four. Now, this block right here Maybe let's say it's not my friend. I'm gonna show you how to make this work because um, I'm assuming some of y'all are probably like me and got lost. So I'm gonna walk you through what you can do. Can you grab me the um, 
paper that I was supposed to set aside that I didn't. Sorry, because I, I knew that I was going to forget that. And hand me like a ruler, like one of those square rulers. Let's see, a two and a half inch square. Two and a half. Okay. And a three and a half. Thank you, sorry. I totally forgot. So, on this, oh, and I'm also using the Sashiko machine to insert these stitches. And I got that idea from Bev McCullough. This block is designed by Sandy Gervais. And this is the block. So on a Saturday, about two Saturdays ago, I made this. And I'm going to show you what happened. <laughs> Luckily, I have a lot of this fabric because um, it didn't work out so well. So what I thought I could do, well, what I did do first is I did everything else except these. And then I thought, OK, let me try to figure out how to do it. So I cut the templates, which you can see they're cut out. But Ashley was so nice. She made me another one that you could see. So I tried to do it, and I could not get this template to work. Now, that doesn't mean the template's not right. That means that Kimberly Jolly does not know anything about templates, and I get flustered easy, and I probably went too fast. I could not get this to work. So I decided to make my own template. Now, right here, I did use H200 triangle paper to make all of these triangles. I did strip piece this and trim down. So this is what I did. I took the paper from one of my flying geese pads because I know the paper can rip off. I turned it over and I made my own template to stitch on because I could not get this to work otherwise. Now that doesn't mean the pattern's wrong and I mean no disrespect. I am just saying I was not able to do it. So I'm going to show you how you make your own template. So just pull a piece of paper out. And this needs to finish two and a half inches square. So by sewing this, 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 I knew this needed to be two and a half inches unfinished and two inches finished because I did all the hard parts first. So this needs to be two and a half inches finished. So the first thing I did is I took my two and a half inch creative grids. You can actually get two on this page. Two and a half inch square ruler and I drew it. Now, I am using a pencil. So that probably wasn't the best idea because I did feel like I got a little bit of pencil ink on here. You can see, okay, yep, you can see. So see right here, my thread, that's color 2000. See right there how dark it is? That's from the lead on the on the paper. Went through to my to my thread. Oh. Yep. But I realized what I did and I fixed it here. So see how that's normal and that's not. So on these I used a friction pin. Just had to be careful I didn't um, iron it. I had to end up using the seam roller, the quick press seam roller. But I figured once I got this right, I'm not going to redo it. So you can see my ink there. So I would use a friction pen, but I'm going to just show you in pencil what to do, how I made this work. Now, this is not scientific. This is just what took me three hours to figure out, and I'm not joking. So you know that this has to be two and a half, and you know that this point needs to be a quarter inch away, right? So at the top, I drew a quarter inch line. And you know that these points are supposed to be a quarter inch away from the points. So I drew little quarter inch points. And, and I'm not kidding, guys. This took me, I'm not kidding, like three hours to figure out. Like making the whole block. Now I need to find the center of this. So luckily, in the center of your Creative Grids ruler, there's a white line right where the center is. So I drew the line where the center is. And then I drew a line from the center to the point. Now, there are several variations of what I did with this. Okay, you want to draw the line from here to here. You do not want to draw the line from here to here because that will not give you this quarter inch point. Ask me how I know because this took me three and a half hours to figure out because I majored in accounting, but not always the sharpest right off the bat. So if you draw your line from here to here, I'm going to draw a light. You're not going to hit your quarter inch. You're going to be over here 
you're gonna have some weird funky thing going on here so then what I did is I took sorry let me grab it I just saw it here it is I took my handy dandy out of quarter creased it here creased it here and then I just cut some pieces I cut like a three inch square for this pink and then I just cut some squares I guessed on some big squares cut them on the diagonal and use those and that's how I got that now from the front you can kind of see my pencil lines I'm gonna be honest you can see my pencil lines on that one and not that one but that is how I made this block work so I hope that that is helpful to you guys in some way it took me forever to figure out so I do hope that that is um, but I did use the paper from my pad because I know that I can tear it off and if I used um, paper from my printer I didn't think I would be able to tear it off as easily so that's how I was able to make this block work are there any questions on that big old mess of Okay, so I have all of that information already done. Elva has it, so Kate, why don't you email Elva, get that, and we can post it on social media somewhere. Because now, and I want to let you know, this is a guesstimate. This is what I bought. So I placed an order with Fat Corner Shop, and I guessed on what I needed because I have only made these blocks. I have not actually... Yeah, I think there's 16 blocks, but I haven't um, made them all. So I don't know exactly what you need. So I gave Elva what I bought. We can put that into a document. Now it's a guess. So it might have way more, it might have way less. I would say it's probably gonna be pretty accurate because I do try to buy only what I need. I don't like to have a lot left over. So um, I tried to buy what I thought would be enough. Okay, I am using a half yard bundle that I have, and I will not, um, on that one, what I do is I draw it in electric quilt before I sew it. I, once I pick my fabric, I starch that half yard piece, and then I have a starched bucket and an unstarched bu bucket, and I just kind of keep them in each bucket because I don't want to starch that whole 40 piece fat quarter, half yard bundle at one time. But you don't need a half yard. You just need like a fat quarter. You definitely don't need a half yard, but I always start with a half yard of everything of Lori's because I end up making with her stuff usually more than one quilt. And um, so I always just start with a half yard of her stuff. All right, and from Nicole Mayer, what ruler for serendipity, uh, biggest ruler is needed? Um, I would probably say the six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler which is right here this is probably what i'm going to use the most in cutting because you're working with half yards so i would say six and a half by 24 and a half that's probably what i'm going to use the most for my big strips and then i'll probably sub cut with six and a half by 12 and a half these two rulers plus the pack of five square rulers we sell that's what i use 99 percent of the time Okay, so I'm gonna show you one more thing and then we're gonna wrap it up. I've got one more thing. I am sewing along with the stitchery sampler. So I'm gonna show you where I'm at. I showed you this last week. This is my first rows put together, keeping it in my little bucket. I went home and I sewed these together these are the last two weeks. Now, last week I did not add my cornerstones here. I just made it a little bit different. This week I made this block, which is block nine. Very easy. This is just simple, straight piecing, nothing to it. 
Now today, I'm gonna take this home, I'm gonna add sashing, and then I'm gonna add that whole row to the bottom. So when I come back next time, all of these will be together. And this is a booklet and a quilt kit that we do have plenty in stock by Joanna Figueroa. If you wanna join us, and she has information on that on um, her blog and her YouTube channel. And this, I just used some leftovers for my backing. So that is what I'm sewing. I did wanna announce one other thing. So last week, David's wife works for Rodeo Austin and he had asked me if we could donate to that um, 501C charity. So I said, yes. So we donated a $500 gift certificate and a quilt that we had Gina Tell make. And I'm proud to announce that Chris Vine, who is a huge uh, fan of ours, purchased it. And we really thank her for the support. David and his wife, thank you for the support. And so excited that it, I, I was so worried that it was not gonna sell for very much. Um, and it sold for more than a lot of the other things so it sold for. So we were so proud to be a part of that. All right, a uh, few things before we wrap up. New YouTube member, Barbara Adams. Welcome, Barbara. Yay. Thank you. And then another new YouTube member, Sandra Cedar. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Lisa Smith for $4.99. And Lisa says, first time being able to watch live today. Thanks for doing all this. I just love it. Aw. Thank you so much. Thank you. A right. uh, few people were asking, where's my matching face mask for my dress? Uh, I need to make one. I do oh, have... I thought you had one. Uh, it doesn't match. It's it's a uh, ruby star. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, it's, it's to me, it matches. It goes with it, yeah. Um, how much fabric did I use for the dress? About four and a half yards. Oh, my goodness. It's the skirt. The skirt's just... Oh, because it's, it's, it's like It's fluffy. a circle skirt, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I could never make that. <laughs> and then Nancy Roy had suggested adding pockets to the side seam since I had talked about adding pockets. The seams are on the front and back, not on the side. So that's what I was like, oh, can't just add them on the sides. Oh. Because the seams don't open up there. But yes, I agree, Nancy. That would be the easiest. And then question from Diane Craig. Have y'all decided if we can add EQ8 to offer their collaboration and providing their drawings for our sew alongs? Okay, so on that... We are going to, on the next social light, we will offer that for the next social lights. That's the only one we're going to offer it on, and we'll see how it goes. That's going to be in 2021. Um, we're already on to other stuff, so we can't go backwards and do that. But we, we'll do it. We'll, we'll try it on, the, on 2021 social lights. It's already on our um, base camp and mm -hmm. whatever you call the air table, um, but not the current one. All right, uh, and then just one last thing for serendipity. When we get to adding the borders, will you show us how you do the borders? Yep. Your way. Thank I you. will show you how I cut and everything. And I'll even show you um, after I assemble that first row together, I will not add the bottom. This. Let me show you right here. So this is the row one. Mm -hmm. Under here, I will show you how I add that to this before we go on to this. And I, I will be straight honest, I don't do it the way that you're supposed to do it. I do it like a modified Kimberly way. <laughs> so um, it might be a little, con not controversial, but a lot of you might not like it, it might not work for you, mm -hmm. just to be upfront about that. So guys, have a great weekend and I will see you next Thursday. <laughs>